So you're ready. You're ready to build your website in Squarespace 7.1, but you're not really sure what steps to take next. You have a lot of templates to choose from. How do you choose? And then also, once you've chosen the template, what do you do once you get started? The backend's changed a little bit. That's what this video is going to be about. So the first thing you need to do is get to the Squarespace 7.1 template store. That's where I'm at right now. However, if you go to the Squarespace website and you just click on templates, it's going to bring you to the Squarespace 7.0 template store, not what you want. So I have provided a link below. Click on that and it will bring you right to where you need to be. First things first, I've already logged in. So that means I can just click on one of these and get going. If you have not, your page is probably gonna look something like this with the little login button up here. Just click login and it'll bring you to this page. You can either log in if you have an account or hit this create an account button to get started. Then once you've done that, navigate back here and let's get going. So which template should you start with? There's a bunch of different options here. What do you do? Well, here's the fun little secret of Squarespace 7.1. All of them are exactly the same. All of these templates have the exact same structure, have the exact same feature set, have the exact same style options. There is no difference. The only difference you see here is the starting point, the starting design. Balboa has a different starting design than Clarkson. However, I could delete all the content in Balboa and turn it into a spitting image of Clarkson, make it the exact same. If you don't take my word for it, check out Squarespace's support site, templates in version Squarespace 1. All sites in version 7.1 share the same template. That means they all have the same style options and features. They all use sections to add content to pages. So what that means is don't spend a lot of time figuring out where you should start in terms of templates. Let's just pick one and get going. So I'm going to choose this one, Clarkson, and let's go. And now I'm in. I'm going to call this website Roy's Website. Hit continue. Next, next, get started. Now we're set. Let's get recentered on what I'm trying to build here. I'm trying to build Roy's Blogging Website. Now this website is going to contain five separate elements. It's going to contain the home page, the blog page, the About Roy page, and the Contact page. And if you're, you've are you used Squarespace 7.0, the blog page is the same as the collection page. You don't need a separate whole page for the collection. The blog page can serve as the, the housing collection of articles plus the actual front-facing page that holds all the, all the articles. Okay, now that we know what we're building, let's look at the first four things we want to do for any new website. First, it's a little hard to get to a website right now because the Squarespace gives you a weird subdomain and it sets your, your website as private. So we want to change those settings first. Next, we want to change the colors and the fonts because that's really going to determine a lot of the design as we're building out the website. So we want to get a good starting point with those. And finally, we want to build out that structure that I talked about just a second ago. We want to build out those five elements. So first thing we want to do is we want to make it really easy to get to our website. Right now, you have to log in through Squarespace. I can't really share this URL. So what I want to do, I'm going to show you, I'm going to copy this right here, everything before the .com. This backslash config is just for your backend. But you can share this subdomain, rabbit link links-45ga.squarespace.com. You can share that with anyone. I have a private tab open over here and I'll paste it. And right now if I share that with someone, this is the page that's going to pull up. It's going to say private site. So let's go and change that. I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to go to site visibility. And I'm going to change this to password protected. And I'm just going to type in a password here. I'm going to, just going to do Roy, R-O-W, and hit save. Now, if I go back, it should. I'm going to refresh this page. Now, I can just type in my password there, hit enter, and boom. I can access rabbit-links-45ga.squarespace.com. Now, that's sort of a confusing URL, though. So, I'm going to change that. I'm going to go to domains in my settings still. I'm going to go to domains. I'm going to hit this, the, the one that's current. And then I'm going to change this to just Roy website. And then I'm going to hit rename. Confirm. Now it's going to redo it up here. I'm going to get an email saying that, hey, you have a new domain. You've changed it. 
I'm going to get rid of that little block. And if I refresh this page, there's my Squarespace email. Uh, if I refresh this page, ooh, it still works. That's cool. Okay, roywebsite.squarespace.com. And boom, here we go. Now I just have to log in again. That's great. There's my password, Roy. And now there I go, Roy website. And that's so much easier to share with Roy. If I'm building this website for Roy, that's so much easier to share with him if I just have this. So that's why we do that. The next thing I like to do is change my colors. So that is in the Design Colors tab. Once you get in here, you'll see a palette where you can change your main palette, and then you have a bunch of themes that you can edit. But right now, let's just start with the palette. So for this website, I sort of want to go with like a, a bright, vibrant blue. And so I'm going to hit Edit, drop down. I'm going to go to my From Color, and I'm just going to pick the blue that I want. I'm just, uh, let's do, let's play around. Let's see, this blue is what's going to change. Uh, I like I like that blue. That's a good blue. So I want to leave it at that. And now I'm going to hit edit, drop down, and go to custom colors. So it's going to keep this blue, but I don't like these two colors. So I'm going to change these. I don't really, you can sort of see a tint of a color. I want these to be, this to be a fully light gray and a fully sort of darker gray, almost like a, a faint black. So that's what I'm going to change. So right now I can change my blue here. I'm going to click this light. I'm going to pull it all the way to the left, maybe bring it down there to about a gray. And then I'm going to hit this. See this? I'm going to bring it all the way down here to the bottom left. And I'm going to make it about right there. That's sort of what I like. Now I'm going to click out and hit save. Now, obviously, colors, it's not going to, I'm not going to spend two minutes on colors and get it right. So I'm going to be coming back to this design colors tab in my back end here quite a lot as I'm building out the rest of my site. But just to get started, I like to start with a bold color, my main, my main brand color, and then a light gray and a dark gray. That just sort of gets me started as I get going. Next, let's look at our fonts. Now, Squarespace has done something a little bit different with our fonts. So I go back to our design, hit fonts. And it gives you a bunch of different options for sans serif, serif, and mixed serif and sans serif. So if you don't know what the difference are, sans in French means without. And so serif, you have a serif font, and then you have a without a serif font. So a serif font is anything, if we look into these, I'm going to change the fonts. A serif is this little... This, this little line at the bottom of text, I don't even really know how to explain it, but the bottom of the R has it, the bottom of this P has it, the bottom of this H has it. These little, these little marks on the, the fonts, that it means you have a serif font. Other companies like MailChimp are using a serif font. This is a, they're using more of a, a rounded serif font, but you can see the bottom of these M sort of have that little line at the bottom. They have these little marks on the L, the little at the top there and at the bottom. And the C has this little circle right there at the top of the Z. That just means it's a serif font. So sans serif is going to be without those little marks. You can see all of these are very flat. There aren't any marks on them. They're just standard text, very easily, easy to read. And mix is obviously some with serif and without serif. So that's what we're looking at right here. I like to go sort of with a plain without serif. I, my, my favorite is like a Futura Archivo. That's another big, bold, in-your-face one. That's a good one. Let's just go with a mix, though, for this website. How about I'm going to do, let's do something totally new that no one's using. Let's do Uneo. I have no idea what that, that word is, so I'm going to use that. I don't see it very often. And I'm just going to hit Save. Now that we've gotten the fonts chosen, Let's build out the structure of our website. So I'm going to go back to design, back to home, jump into pages here. So we have our about, initiatives, contact us, home, take action, another home. Odd, don't know why they did that. So what I usually like to do is just delete all of this content in here and start from scratch. So I'm just going to delete all of these things. There we are. Now we're starting straight from scratch. So I'm going to have a home page. 
I want an About page, an About Roy page. So I'm going to hit this plus icon, and it's going to give you a bunch of different things we can start with. I'd like to start with templates, so I'm going to hit Page Layouts. This is going to give me a list of a bunch of different templates I could start with over here. So I'm going to go to About, because that's what I want to build right now, an About page. I'm just going to look for one that looks kind of nice. It looks like photos are loading a little slow on my internet here, so that's why it's taking a minute. But let's see, I'm going to have a big picture of Roy there, so let's do this one. That one looks good. I'm going to hit that. It'll pop it up over here. I'm just going to change this to say About Roy, and I'll put a picture of Roy there. There we go. That looks like a good starting point for this. The next one I want is a contact page. So I'm going to hit this plus again, Page Layouts, Contact, and now let's find a contact page that I like like this with the little form very simple very clean very easy we'll just have contact I don't like the one so I'm going to delete that now we also need our blog page so I'm going to hit this plus now instead of a page layout this is going to be a blog under our collection so I'm going to hit blog and again it's going to give me an option layout option for all the different pages we want looks like it's still struggling to load a little bit um, I've noticed this can be a bit buggy, like I would presume this image is supposed to be all over here. So that's why I don't make too many decisions based on what is given here, because of course I can change any of this around to any anything I want it to be. So I'm going to start, let's just say with this blog 2, how about, it's going to say blog 2, wrong, I want this to say just blog. Also, this is our blog page. We can add a bunch of things onto this page, so I don't actually necessarily need a fifth blog page. What this collection can serve as that fifth page. So we have our collection right in here. I can click in, I can write all my articles, and also this blog page, double click there, I can add different elements on there to make it a more robust page, which in Squarespace 7.0, you didn't have that option. Now, of course, I want all of these items over here in my not link section in my main nav section. So I'm just going to pull all of these, just click and drag them all up here. I'm going to change the order around a little bit. Probably want it to end with contact. Second can, can be about Roy. And there we go. So I have all my items right up here in this take action button. So I'm going to click over to my home page. And I'm going to change this out because I don't want any of these social icons. And honestly, I don't even want this take action button. So I'm going to get rid of all those. The way I do that, hit the edit button on the page. Going to pop in, hover over the edit site header. Hit edit site header and it's going to give me some options for my layout. So I'm going to hit header layout. There we go. And it's going to give me a bunch of options for me to use uh, to do with my header right here. So I don't want the this element here, this take action element, and these social icons. So I'm going to click into elements. I'm going to deselect social links, and I'm going to deselect button. There we go. Now we've gotten rid of all of them. Also, I sort of want the background. This is going to be a little hard to read. I'm just going to keep the background not transparent as like a white color because that's just going to keep it more clean and simple and it's going to use the default theme of whatever page I'm using. So I'm going to go back. And of course site title, site logo, I can add a logo right here. I can change this to just, maybe I want this to say Roy's blog. It'll change it right there. I can also do whatever in there. So there we go. That's our header section. So the last thing I want to do is actually build out the page a little bit. So you'll notice each this page is built in sections. This is a section, this whole background image, this everything that's gray is its own section, everything that's white here is a section. So you have a bunch of different sections on this page. So this it's it's laid out sections stacked on top of section. So I don't really like any of this content. So I'm going to go in and just delete a lot of these sections. If you hover over one and hit the, the trash can icon, I'll just ask you if you want to remove it. Just remove it all. I'm going to remove all of these except for the header because I'll play around with the header a little bit. Okay, now we've got the footer there. There we go. 
Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to change the, the section height of this entire block. So I'm going to hit this little edit button, and that brings up my editing options for this entire section. You can change the section height here. That's what I want to do. I'm going to hit L for large, and it's going to make it as large as the screen. I could also change the content width if I hit large. It would allow content to span the entire width of the screen. You can also change the alignment of the text of the content in there. I sort of like it down at the bottom. You also have options to change the background image to a video if you want and the colors. So again, remember when I was talking about colors in, uh, in the earlier section. I don't know why it jumped to that. We're gonna... There we go. Uh, I've talked about colors in the earlier section and you had those 10 themes. Well, here are those 10 themes again aligned with the colors that I chose. And if I ch click a different theme, you'll notice it changes the text color, the button color, the background overlay if there's an image. It changes all of those elements. And you can change all of those back in the colors section of the design in the design tab, you can change all of these different options. You have 10 different themes that you can style however you like. Uh, for me right now, I'm just going to click this black minimal just because, you know, I like it. It works. The next section I want to add is a list of all my blogs because people are coming to Roy's website and they want to see my articles first. So, or Roy's articles, I should say. I'm going to hit this plus icon. It's going to allow me to add another one of those sections, the, one of those sections that I just deleted. Here is, again, much like the page layouts, you have a bunch of different options. Sections, you have a bunch of different options to choose from. So what I want to do, since I want to add some of my articles, is I want to add the summary of some of my blogs. But I, there's no block for summaries right now. So I don't know why, so I'm going to start with a blank. I'm just going to hit Add Blank. It's going to give me just a blank little section. And again, I'm going to add a block by just hovering over my little insert point here, clicking, giving me this options, these options here, and let's just make it as a list. I'm going to hit list, and now it's going to pull in my blog from blog. I'm going to select that, and there are my four blank blogs. I actually want to hit apply there. This looks good, but I want to pull it in. This is too wide across, so again, I'm going to edit the style of my section clicking that button, and I want the content width to be medium. Keep it in the center though, but that looks good, so we'll leave that. Then finally, I want an area, ooh, delete this, this little block, don't want that. Finally, I want an area for people to sign up for my newsletter. So again, I'm gonna hit this plus icon again. Now, you see newsletter right here, so I'm gonna click on newsletter, and I'm just gonna select one of these. These all look pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to make it really simple for them. All I have to do is put in their email address, and boom, there we go. Now we are all set up. All right, there we go. That's sort of how you make the basic outline. You could just fill in this content. I'd get Roy to write some content here. You can fill it out if you want, if you're, if you're building along with me. Very simple, very easy to build a super crisp, clean, yet refined website in Squarespace 7.1.